Good evening, folks. Obviously, you can see it's um, still during the day at the minute, but I thought I'd say good evening because you're watching this at night. If you're um, new to the channel, uh, thanks for watching. Um, hope you like the video. If you're a regular subscriber, cheers for watching. We're just out here with a sprayer at the minute doing T3 fungicide, mainly like a late ear wash, and my uh, agronomist calls it an ear wash, mainly for uh, fusarium. I think is how you pronounce it. Yeah, we're just out here, just checking the wheat. We're down here now, look, looking lovely and fat. I think this is a uh, gleam. So the wheat's just finished flowering. I think you might have seen, I don't know whether you can see any of the little flowers on there. Tiny little flowers where wheat flowers. Here you go, there's a better one. Ooh, that's even better. Don't know if you can see them. Tiny little white, kind of look like little caterpillars there, look. Tiny little caterpillars, that's the wheat flowering that is. I'm trying my best, I'm not an agronomist, as you already all know. I'm going to show you how we fill a sprayer up in a minute, so keep watching to the end of the video and I'll, I'll explain how, how I fill that sprayer up. So we're up to like 681 subscribers now and I'm absolutely over the moon with that. I can't thank each and every one of you enough really. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Look at my office, look. Well, there's, there's my office, but here's my office where I get to go and spend all day. Like I said before, keep watching, guys. Thanks for watching. Good morning. I know my hair's a bit wonky because I ain't got a hat on. But, um, this is about half past five, quarter to six. Ooh. Just out with the um, killer attack dogs. Yeah. Come on, dogs. Going for a walk with them. I got a few apologies to make, first of all. We were meant to have a big video of cereals going on, but we had a catastrophic memory card malfunction i think and um we haven't got it so the apologies are we haven't got a cereals video which is rubbish we met some really cool people namely uh, richard from emnif i think he said he was i called him roger to start with so sorry Rod, uh, richard for getting your name wrong number one fan over here <laughs> yeah. grateful for you um, watching and everything is great so uh richard. yeah roger here Richard. 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 Yeah, Richard. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Richard's our um, number one fan. I'm grateful for every every single one of you. So. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Boy, nice to see you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Lovely. Let's carry it on. Yeah. yeah. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank Keep you. Keep commenting. Say hello. How cool is that? Oh, well, I mean, we got fans. We got fans. I'm glad we walked down this row now. I can hardly fit my head between the rows. Um. That was really cool. That kind of made my day knowing that we're doing something good and and something that people like watching so and we're just going to have a wander to the black grass where the zern top cut weed harvester went through the other day now i mean we got the timing completely wrong as you'll see get out of the wheat dogs this is probably a bad move bringing the dogs down here but you can see how much it's bolted in the last few days because i bet that was quite low that's a rogue in there but you can see the wheat flowering look that's a wheat flower but yeah, this is where we went through with the harvester. And you can see the bloody black grass is bolted. They've all got the heads chopped off. I mean, this is the key with timing. Timing was everything. And we got it wrong. Good tool. I think keep timing right and it'll clear, clear most of the black grass out. You can tell the difference between winter wheat and winter wheat drilled, drilled really late. I drilled this uh, March the 6th, I think I drilled this. So you can tell the difference between something drilled in October and something drilled really late. This is well behind, but if it gets a bit taller than that, I'm happy. Lovely morning out here. Let's go do some spraying, shall we? We're away. Yeah, I've got a couple, I've got, well, I've got a couple of fields to spray. Obviously, we just walked through the field with the black grass in, and now we're um, now we're going to go spray it. I've only got 400 litres in here, so it's only enough to do about like a hectare or uh, two and two and a bit hectares. So I've got a, quite a bit of this field to finish. So let's get this sprayed out, and then I've got another field to go and spray with the same mix. And then I've got loads of different mixes to put in for loads of different fields. Come on, spray it, Randy. Go. There we go. Rear wheel steering's working. You can kind of see the black grass there now from a higher vantage point. That's a bit we didn't harvest and that's a bit we did. So 
it kind of cleared it up a little bit. That was a massive patch of black grass, and now you kind of thinned it out a bit. So we have thinned it out a little bit, so it has done a pretty good job. But like I said, timing's everything. So don't think that we've done it a bad, bad review. Um, timing is everything. So if you get your timing right, I, I'm pretty certain it would take all that out. Whether it regrew and uh, is another story, but so uh, I mean, you can see where it's, it's bolted again. It's almost bolted, bolt, got a second wind and bolted above the uh, bolted above the wheat to, to, to overcompete with the wheat. Um, once the wheat grows, then the, the black grass has to do something to try and outcompete the wheat. Once the wheat comes up to join the black grass for the first time, the black grass bolts which is when we caught it, you know, they were both same, similar height, then the black grass bolts again to try and get above the wheat. So don't ask me why that does that, but boom track is on now. Working well. See, you've got a little bit of drift going on, but nothing major. So can I get another run out of this field? I've only got one more end to do on this field and I'm done, but I'm gonna run out of chemical before I run out of sprays, I think. We'll try and get on top of this black grass problem with, um, with natural ways, cover crops and late drillings and spring cropping and stuff like that, you know. One more end to do, one more end to do. So the rest of this field's pretty good for black grass. No, uh, so, says here and then finds three or four bits there. Right, we are done that field. Let's work out eight hectares for eight times one three three equals a thousand liters. Just put a thousand liters. This is the great thing about this sprayer. Thousand and sixty-five liters. Okay then. Let's have some of that. Right, I've got to figure out and try and remember how much uh, chemical I need to put in now. Right. Let me see how much I got to put in. I always like to do my paperwork as I'm driving along, folks. So let's get filled up. I need to put a set of filters on it because uh, when you fire it up and drive down the road, all of a sudden it just has a little cough spits out a load of diesel and then carries on. I don't know why that is, whether it's leaking back through the pressure rail or something, I don't know. I'll, I'll get it fixed. So yeah, spray's got an auto fill on it. Which is awesome. As soon as it gets full, it switches itself off, which is great. If it ever gets there. There we go. This will be the last field I get sprayed today, I think. Right, now this is our worst field for black grass. It's just horrendous. As you can see, it's not really drifting that bad. I don't know if you can see. So I'm only doing 2.3 bar, so. Keep the boom nice and low. Let's turn the boom track off for a minute. It does tend to wander a bit. Another little patch of black grass there. Dropping another patch of black grass there, look. You see there's a patch there, there's a patch in the gateway. And this field had a, a pre-em on it. It had a roundup, then the tillage work, and drilled all in the same time, and then and then then a and a pre-em on it. So the pre-em's obviously not done anything. Yeah, so it had all the all the chemistry thrown at it and it's still got it covered in black grass. So the, the black grass is totally resistant to any chemistry. That's a delight, isn't it? Other than that, the only other uh, thing in our arsenal that we had taken away from us is stubble burning. Um, the thing I don't understand is, I know it's banned, but the rest of the planet you still uses, if they want a clean start and they can't get on any other way, they can still stubble burn. Now, to me that seems a bit unfair. We're kind of that a stubble burn is free and obviously he's putting some you say oh but it's bad for the environment it's bad for the environment well it's not really because um all the sulfur and stuff it releases is all um is all good for the planet um uh, for the for the next crop if that makes sense all the all the um trees and stuff are all uh, they love sulfur so crops especially love sulfur we're now having to put man-made sulfur on rather than the crops getting it out of the atmosphere because there's not enough sulfur in the atmosphere. I know sulfur in the atmosphere is a bad thing for human beings, but it's great for crops. Crops love it, which is odd, isn't it? It's very odd. One good thing about my John Deere spray, look. And uh, if you lot can see that, you can just move one boom, fold one boom in, move around the telegraph pole. 
unfold it and back up again. Save me driving through the crop. How many of you guys have got telegraph poles in your field? This is one of two. I've only got two in two fields, so that's one. And the other one's on the other wing on another field. Um, I know some of you have got telegraph poles, like a line of telegraph poles like that all the way through your field, so that, that can be, get tiresome. Oh dear. I don't know what's wrong with me. Why did I need to get up at five o'clock this morning? Ugh. Yeah, it's starting to get a lot of drift now, so not really a great spraying day, so I'll pack up. But I'll just get this field done and then I'm onto a different different mix. T3 ear wash, just a fungicide on the on the ears and on the flag leaf and stuff. I mean the flag leaf disappearing now, so just to keep it disease free and and happy and uh, high yield in and stuff so uh, hopefully we're all good. Did anybody with black grass problems go out and spray Roundup at harvest time on the field? Does that slow the black grass down in germination? Um, it's a question I need to I need to find out. I didn't know because obviously when you grow seed wheat for seed you don't put no Roundup on it. Um, because it affects the germination. Um, so my question is, does anybody, does anybody put Roundup in? If I went and round up this field, would it slow the germination of black grass down? Good question. Anybody lets me know, that'd be great. I forgot to say, like, if you like the videos, guys, keep subscribing, keep liking, and keep commenting and stuff. We love the comments. We try and get re replied to all of the comments. No matter how insignificant and silly they may sound, um, any conversation is a good conversation. We, we really honestly don't know where farming's going to end up. We really, we really don't. Um, you know, they're cutting the subsidies down. Well, farming, in my eyes, farming, we've, we've been breaking even for the last four years. So to then take that money away from us means there's no, there's no money in it. So why would you bother? Um, bit depressing really uh, uh yeah just i mean the price of food ha price of wheat's gone up but spuds has been another year when it break even again so why, why would i bother growing spuds i think i may just cut that out spuds was our um our money maker you know our um cash cow if you like our um most profitable crop um the only thing that really made any money but i mean i wish i'd never planted potatoes now and put all wheat in it's lovely when everything's working right look sit with your feet up don't forget guys if you need any of these uh, angle covers some gaiters like that get on our links in the description and uh, get buying so my boots are normally full of dirt um, but these stop everything that nothing got in my boot this morning not even a spaniel my mum calls them lally gags I have no idea what <laughs> why they called that but weird name for a ankle gaiter I've also got my drinks bottle as well which I forgot this morning but my drinks bottle is a mega Anna, um, Anna got one and, uh, and I was like, ooh, that's good. So you put like <clears throat> two or three ice cubes in it in the morning. It stays cold all day, like really cold. Like even if it's sat in the sun, it stays really cold. The great thing with the drinks bottles is I haven't used a plastic bottle since I bought two of them bottles. They're awesome, absolutely mega they are. All right. Do I go and do and carry on and do any more work or do I go and put my feet up for a little while before I go out booting? Yay! La, 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 la. Yeah, I'm gonna sign out here now then guys. So I hope you have had a good weekend and uh, it's now Saturday mid-morning for me. So go and have a cup of tea with my niece. See you later guys. Howdy folks, we're at the filling station. Oh, sorry, I'm just getting back in the cab. This is what I get to go spraying. First things first. You write everything down. So I've just been and sprayed this. Just been and sprayed these fields. These fields here. The ones I've already done this morning. Right, we write down. I was making a mental note of it as well. And well, a uh, written down note in my diary. So I've been T3, Botany, Big and Small, Lee Back at Yard, and Lee 27. I bet you've all got some weird named fields, haven't you? Now I need to fill this in. Um, so I go on the weather and it was saying i write down today's date which is 13th 13th of june 22 so i started at about um 10 o'clock and it's now one o'clock 1 p.m 
Uh, wind speed 1 to 2k. There's hardly any wind today. Uh, wind direction was southeast. I always have a look and see what the, because uh, obviously everyone's got a weather app now. So, uh, what is it today? Overcast? And the temperature was, when I started, about 19. And now I'm finished, it's 21. And the operator is Daniel, that's me. And buffer zone, 3 metres. Always leave a 3 metre buffer zone between the water courses and edge of my field. So that's that done. Right, next step on filling up the sprayer is going to the next recommendation sheet where I've got some fields over hot water spray and working out how many hectares I need, how many hectares I need to do the job. And unfortunately, I haven't got my calculator here, so I know I've got eight and 12. So there's 20 hectares there. I always write down what I'm doing, 20 hectares. Um, I, all this lot's going in one load anyway, so yeah, that's a bit weird. Magnesium, zero, zero. Don't put any on. <laughs> I know that's wrong, but I'll uh, I'll put some on. So that's the first step. I'm going to have to get my calculator out because I ain't got a calculator in the spray. I always use my phone, but <laughs> who'd have thought having your phone for filming YouTube would take you away from doing your job when you need a calculator. So, so I've just worked out. I'm putting on 140 litres a hectare. Just I'm cutting the water rate down. I'm supposed to probably put it on a bit more than that, but I've got stuff to do. So... Uh, I always cut the water rate down a little bit. Spartacus X Pro, I uh, worked that out. That I've actually got 21 hectares there to do. So I worked that out at 140 litres a hectare, 2,940. Uh, the Spartacus Pro, I need 24.612 litres of that. And magnesium, I know that I need to put on 3 litres a hectare. So that's 60, roughly 60 hectares. So I've got a bit of an antiquated uh, way of doing things on my farm. So uh, forgive me if I'm not up to date with having them. I've got a bucket that I fill up the uh, manganese, magnesium and stuff like that at the minute. Till I get a, till I can, well, till I can afford a pony flow to uh, get them up high and then just undo the tap and let them flow straight into the sprayer. I have to transfer it like that or use cans. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go and put T2 fungicide on some of my late spring drilled spring wheat. So that's what we're off to do. Now we've got all of our numbers in order. There we go, that's better. Now get the sprayer fired up and uh, enter all the details into this. Right. Put that back on. So I can enter how much I've put on a litre a hectare here. So I'm gonna go with 140 and then I can enter how much I need in the tank. So. What did I say? 2,940. So that's that done. Turn the radio down. Right, tick that box and the sprayer will fill itself up. So it's going to get quite noisy and I'm going to go get changed into my PPE a little bit and, uh, and I'll meet you outside. I've got to put this sexy item of clothing on now. So uh, I'll get dressed up in this and I've got to put gloves on as well. Normally if I'm doing powders and stuff, I'll put a respirator on, but I'm outside anyway, so I can keep out of the wind and uh, and not be covered in it, you know, so, uh, right. Do the big. Aeroplane's going over. I've got my coveralls on. This is a bit difficult when I've only got my phone. So let's hook up the uh, spray pipe. So there we go. Now, uh, it's not a sprayer leak in this leak got a leak, the pipe's got a leak on it. It's not leaking out of the fitting on the sprayer, the pipe's leaking clean water out of it, so uh, it's not too bad. Hopefully you lot can hear me. So I put the chemical in here, clean water goes in there, it's all going in the tank. Lovely. So I need some Spartacus X Pro. That's for the next load. Spartacus X Pro. I always have a look on the shelf to make sure I ain't got none kicking about. I used an empty can up first, but I cannot see any. I thought I'd got some of that, but obviously not. Ooh, that's heavier than I thought. <laughs> I got loads of stuff here to go on and loads of stuff to go back as well because I, I haven't used too much, so this will nearly be empty by the time I'm finished the season, you know. And obviously everything has to be recycled, so I normally I normally wait till I got a pile and then clear it all up. I'll uh, I tidy all that up when I'm finished. Right, that's that lot out, and you always have to read the label. But I'm not putting granulars in today, so granulars always go in first. Most of the time I do listen to the rules and I do as I'm told. Uh, mixing instructions. Thoroughly shake the pack before use and add the required contents of Spartacus X Pro. Half fill the sprayer with the agitation system in operation and then fill 
to the required level. Continue agitation at all times during spraying and stoppages until the tank is completely empty. It tells you all the, everything you need to do, maximum individual dose and stuff for uh, crops and what crops you can use them on and uh, safety precautions and uh, disposal of the cans and stuff and uh, what diseases it controls and stuff like that. So and there's my gloves, look, I put them on all the time. It always says mixing instructions, half fill the sprayer with water and then add it and then continue with filling. But I don't know about you lot, but most of the time I um, I start filling and start adding chemical in. Um, just a little cheat, I, I, the chemical still works as well as if you're putting it in on your half full, you know. So um, I, most of the time I haven't got time to sit here and wait for the spray to half fill. I've got to get it in. I know I could stop, but time is of the essence. Best off getting it in there as quick as you can and leave the agitation running. Tell me to put the agitation on, so I'll put the agitation on and we'll get filling. See if we can do this one-handed. So shake the can well, normally tip it upside down a couple of times. Just in case anything's settled in the bottom of it, it's an old uh, an old can. Unscrew the lid, pop that down there, and then you tip it in without any plugging. So pour it in, nice and gently, so don't splash back at you. Hopefully you lot can hear me. Right, uh, all out, put it on there, we've got a can rinse system on the sprayer. So I just triple rinse the spray uh, can, like that. One more time. And there we go. Make sure they're well shaken out. I did have a drip tray, but I, I ran my drip tray over. And you got a clean washer here as well. I just rinse the lids out most of the time. Most of them have got a foil cap in, so you don't never get nothing on the lid. Just give that a rinse. That's nice clean water anyway. There we go. Job done. This can can now go off to be recycled. Yeah, there we go. Right, I've got two more to put in, and then I'll uh, I will put the um, other stuff in. A little um, storage bin here. I keep all my PPE and gloves that side. Uh, coveralls this side. I've got a first aid kit in there, and I've got an eye wash station in the other bit as well. So just in case anything bad happens, you know, you're pretty well covered. You're all sorted. So the spray is just switched off on the and I just carried on with the agitation and the, uh, I've just got two buckets of um, man magnesium in. So yeah, just give it a little rinse out, dip this in, now we've finished leaking clean water everywhere. And there we go, job done. Yeah, so that's that. Yeah, a little tidy up around the old place, because obviously an untidy workplace is an inefficient workplace. And now I'm going to get out my clobber and, uh, and then go and spray it out. Yeah, I hope you liked today's video, guys. I'm back at the yard now. Just had a little spot of tea. A little bit of Gordon Ramsay's beans on toast. i got one more field of, um, well, you could call it spring wheat, but, I mean, it's uh, skyfall, winter wheat, drilled in March. So, last field of uh, spring wheat, I've got to put, like, a T2 on this one, I think. So, tra changing it up a little bit. Um, and then I'm on to spuds. So, I'm going to spray the spuds tonight with um, with Titus. And then tomorrow morning, I'm going to nip out there tomorrow morning and put some manganese magnesium on. And then Dad's going to get ridging up, get moulding the spuds up. And uh, if he gets that done, then uh, then I can get some irrigators out as well tomorrow. So, been a bit of a um, rough couple of weeks, I just think. Uh, we're getting on top of it. Who thought um, trying to find a time to make YouTube videos was um, part of my uh, agreement when I signed up for this farm in Malarkey? That's great, guys. I can't, can't be... Uh, any more appreciative of uh, your watching and all subscribing. So if you like all these videos, make sure you click on the other videos that are now coming up in the boxes here, here and here.